With the growing role of artificial intelligence in our society, the world of AI, big data and big technology, I think it's important that we think about how AI might shape the future of democracy. A robot you can talk to. About these concerns around AI. It may seem like a question from a sci-fi movie, but with recent advancements in AI technology, ChatGPT, best we've seen from computers, logically yet. inconsistent. We should start considering if algocracy or rule by algorithms is the future of governance. We need to be aware of the immense potential of artificial intelligence, both positive and negative potential. Thinking of a robot coming from the future to help us run our governments sounds terrifying. Let's begin with a definition of what algocracy is. Basically, algocracy refers to the idea that all decisions and policies are created from the output of computer algorithms instead of by human politicians and lawmakers. To some extent, it's already happening in our society. Algorithms are now being used to make everything from hiring decisions and credit scoring to parole recommendations. AI is the ultimate reliable worker. If it passes testing, it will do exactly what you asked it to do. In fact, 99% of Fortune 500 companies currently use algorithmic software to perform decisions in the hiring process of their employees. Algorithms that are being used, they've been trained on data about previous applicants. And in the context of criminal justice, AI is being fed training data from defendants, which is used to help determine a judgment. These uses of AI may already be cause for concern, because the algorithmic systems that are used may have certain biases that stem from the data they're fed or the humans who program them. This is what's called AI bias, and these biases sometimes lead to inequitable decision making. For example, because of how certain ethnic groups were treated in the past, a black person is, for instance, more likely to receive a harsher sentence than a white person is for the same crime. While the technology itself might be neutral, the data points that we utilize to actually put into these algorithms are not. So what happens then when these algorithms become even more advanced and we start to use them at a much bigger scale, to the point where they replace politicians and lawmakers and start making decisions that affect entire societies, to the point where AI systems make every decision for our systems like healthcare, education and foreign policy, to our individual rights and freedoms, our, our economic systems and even our democracy. We as humans have to learn how to communicate with AI. We have to learn what AI is capable of doing and what it's not. Some experts believe that we could see the rise of so-called super-intelligent AI, or in other words, an AI system that's capable of outperforming and outsmarting us humans in almost every imaginable task. If it comes to that, it's not too difficult to envision a world where AI algorithms are making all of the important decisions for us. A world where politicians, that's to say human politicians, aren't necessary any longer. A known pundit is historian and author of Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind, Yuval Noah Harari. He talks about how big data algorithms, which use unimaginably large datasets, may emerge from the current advancement of data processing power. Uh, the central tenet is that given enough data, especially biometric data about a person, and given enough computing power, Google or Facebook can create an algorithm that knows you better than you know yourself. We might have incredible data to work with in the near future, both because of our growing online presence and because of certain new biotechnology that may help us get real-time data about our body and what's happening at a cellular level. If we have access to this kind of data and have enough processing power, which is quite realistic with current advancements, these algorithms would become so proficient that they could help us decide large parts of our lives. And although it sounds strange, they would actually make better decisions than us in just about everything. In many, many situations, machine-based decisions are excellent and they are better than human decisions. Embracing artificial intelligence can definitely make our lives better. 
That's everything from a doctor's medical treatments, which would be better because the AI easily performs an analysis of the data of your biological body and tells you exactly what's wrong with it and how to fix it. And it could be more trivial, like deciding what you should watch for TV tonight based on your facial expressions or how much you laugh or smile or how your eyes move during other programs you've watched. By using these algorithms, the AI would predict what TV show or movie you'll enjoy the most. Even in your dating life, big data algorithms would know which partner fits you best. As Arari states in his book 21 Lessons for the 21st Century, once AI makes better decisions than us about careers and perhaps even relationships, our concept of humanity and of life will have to change. Humans are used to thinking about life as a drama of decision making. Liberal democracy and free market capitalism see the individual as an autonomous agent constantly making choices about the world. But once we begin to count on AI to decide what to study, where to work and who to marry, human life will cease to be a drama of decision making. Democratic elections and free markets will make little sense. This raises some serious questions about the future of democracy too. If AI systems know what's best for us, why shouldn't we let algorithms govern our society? Should we really hold on to our autonomy and freedom of control if it leads to worse decisions for the majority of the population? But on the other hand, if something goes wrong and we aren't the ones calling the shots, what happens to the concept of representation? Who's accountable for the decisions made by the AI systems? And how do we ensure that they're making decisions that are fair and just? Any time you're developing technology, there is a dual side to it. Mm -hmm. I think the journey of humanity is harnessing the benefits while minimizing the downsides. For more simple use cases of AI systems, we could hold the developers of the algorithm responsible and accountable. We could say that they should adhere to the ethical principles that align with our societal values. We could also implement a regulatory body to oversee the decisions of these AI systems, which might keep organizations or individuals accountable for their algorithms. As technology platforms play an ever more dominant role in our lives, I believe platforms should be required to make users aware of the fact that an algorithm is controlling the content they see. But what if the AI systems become self-regulating? They could then monitor and regulate their own decisions and develop mechanisms to adhere to certain ethical principles and values that have been programmed into the system. That might solve the problem, but still it's questionable at best if an AI system could truly be self-regulating, because when it comes down to it, the system was still designed by humans. Let's uh, step away from our speculations about what algocracy might look like for a second. Let's look at what the population thinks of all of this. A survey conducted by researchers at IE University in Madrid asked the following question. How would you feel about reducing the number of national parliamentarians in your country and giving those seats to an artificial intelligence algorithm that would have access to your data to maximize your interests? They found that a majority of Europeans, that's 51%, and a majority of Chinese citizens, that's 75%, approve of the idea of replacing some politicians with artificial intelligence. On the other hand, only 40% of US citizens and 31% of UK citizens support the idea. Although this isn't a story about why these different geographies have different attitudes towards AI governance, it's certainly interesting to think about, and it might reflect the difference in cultural values and even perceived effectiveness of current political systems in the different countries. In any case, if you're in the US or in the UK, you might be more likely to think that the implementation of algocracy is a bad idea. Maybe because of a distrust or skepticism towards technology, or maybe because of a feeling that the computers would take away our decisions, what makes us human in a way. And this isn't to dissuade you or anything, but AI and robots probably aren't as scary as you might think. It's unlikely that they're going to take over our world or something like you would see in The Matrix or in Terminator. I'll be back. Harari has a great quote on this. He says, Perhaps the worst sin of present day science fiction is that it tends to confuse intelligence with consciousness. As a result, it is overly concerned about a potential war between robots and humans when in fact we need to fear a conflict between a small superhuman elite empowered by algorithms and a vast underclass of disempowered homo sapiens. 
Here I think he highlights that we should be more worried about the growing inequality in our societies, which he believes might lead to the elite of our populations transcending humanity, or homo sapiens, by merging with biotechnology to become so-called superhuman. And I agree with his point. We shouldn't fear technology, but rather we should fear how it's used. To wrap up this discussion, I think it's fair to say that AI is here to stay. And we're at a crucial point in time where we have a say in how it's used. AI should be used to benefit us all, everyone, not just a select few elites. All the questions I've posed in this video don't really have easy answers. And it's really an open debate at this point. But surely, we need to keep talking about the role of AI in our society and how it might shape the future of democracy. Leave a comment about your thoughts on the topic and support me by subscribing to my channel and liking the video.